And now, now we have question number 19. Question number 19 from May, June 2017, paper 2, variant 2. It's in a triangle PQR, PQ is equal to 8 centimeters, and QR is equal to 7 centimeters. The area of this triangle is 17 centimeters squared. Calculate the two possible values of angle PQR. Okay, so in a question like this, we need to do a bit of thinking, a bit of like a brainstorming. Okay, they've told us some information about um, this triangle. They've told us its area and two of the lengths. Okay, PQR, PQ and QR. Now, the lines PQ and QR, the lines PQ and P and QR, they will intersect at the angle Q because if you just imagine you've got PQ and QR they intersect at the angle at, at the, the corner Q so basically what we have here and I'm going to draw it in, a, in, in this way first like I'll draw it like this first I'll draw it like this to try and make you understand what's going on here mm. yeah something like this I'll just draw it like this so we've got P, so this is P and Q and R. Okay, they told us that this is 8 centimeters. Let me just make it a bit more realistic, I'll make it a bit shorter. This one a bit shorter than that one. It says PQ is 8 centimeters and QR is, this as well, QR is 7 centimeters. <clears throat> so this eight centimeters this is seven centimeters and the area of this triangle is seven, 17 centimeters squared now how can i link the area of a triangle and we don't know if it's a right angle but i know that this these two sides okay are eight and seven and i want to find the two possible values of the angle pqr so i need to find this angle here I know the two sides that make the angle, I know the area. So that should ring a bell for you. Say, so, okay, the area of a triangle is given by a half base times height, which won't apply here because we don't know the vertical height. But it's also given by a half times A, B, sine C, something that we learned in trigonometry. That when you have two sides and the angle that make those two sides, the angle between those two sides, um, then if you use the formula half A, B, sine C, half times the two sides times the sine of the angle between them, you will then get the area of the triangle. So we already have the area. So we already have the area, already have the two sides. This is the only thing we don't know. So it seems we can use that to find the answer here. So we have a half times 8 times 7. That's a half AB times sine of the angle between them. Sine of X is equal to 17. Okay, that cancels with that. So you're left with sine X is equal to 17 over 4 sevens are 28 so x is going to be found by doing inverse sine of 17 over 28 so we're going to find that so we take our trusty calculator and we have to press inverse sine let's move it out of the way so we can see what we're doing so we've got to press inverse which is found by pressing shift sine in brackets 17 over 28 17 divided by 28 <clears throat> close the bracket and make sure it's in degree mode and yes it is equals 37.383 um, I'll write it as that so x equals 37.383 now Two things you'll notice. It says calculate the two possible values of the angle. And there's two spaces for the answer. So of course one of them is going to be 37.3. Okay. Now what you must realize, okay, is when you find the sign of an angle, the same with cosine or tangent actually, uh, basically you're finding what's called the principal angle. There are other angles which share the same sign ratio. For example, the, the ratio of um, the sine of a half is 30 degrees. Okay, shift, sorry, the sine of 30 degrees is equal to a half. Okay, so if I press shift sine of a half, my calculator, inverse sine half, I will get 30 degrees. 
But if you press sine of 150, you will also get a half. The sine of 130 is equal to a half. The sine of 150 is also equal to a half. The calculator, however, if you press shift sine a half, will only give you 30 degrees. It won't give you 150 degrees because it only gives you what's called the principal value, which we can understand it right now. Um, that it's the value that we could say is closest to zero for now. Okay, so when I found this angle 37.38, okay, I'm only finding the principal value. There might be other values which could be valid for this question, which are possible values for the angle PQR. Okay, now, if I were to um, take this, okay, and change it somehow, so that this length is still 8, okay, and this is still 7, all right, the, basically, if you, if, you re, if you change it like that, it's possible for you to get a triangle which has the same area, but this is still 8, and this is still 7. Okay, but this angle now won't be the same as what it was before. It's now changed. Okay, and, but the thing is, the sine of that angle will give us the same as the sine of this angle. Okay, just like the sine of um, 30 gives you the same as sine of 150. Okay, as we know from... I just want well, to mention an example. That's not to do with this question. So therefore, there's the sine of 37.8, 37.4, sorry. I should say 37 point. Sorry, well, that's a bit of a boo-boo there I made. That should say 37.4, by the way. Okay, because it's rounding to one decimal place. We, we always make sure we got it right at the end. That's 37.4 because it's 37.38. 383, so it's 37.4. Okay, so that should be 37.4, that's the first thing. And secondly, there's another angle, the sine of 37.383 is equal to the sine of some other angle. Now, with the sine curve, the two angles are related. If you know one of them, the other one is going to be 180 minus it. So the other angle is going to be 180 minus 37.383. Okay, that would be the other angle. So you do 180 minus the angle, so you take your calculator. Whatever angle you got there, you do 180, subtract the angle. So subtract the angle for 180, and you get 142.616. So 142.616. Was that right? Let me just make sure. Where's my calculator gone? 142.616, yes. Okay, so now those are our two answers. Okay, so that's one. Let me write that need to 142.61. My pen is messing up today. 616. Now, angles should always be given to the nearest to, to one decimal place. Okay, normally, if this was a length, I'd write 143 because it's 3SF, but it's an angle. Don't forget, angles should be given to one decimal place unless otherwise stated. It's not otherwise stated. So the important thing to realize here, this is actually taken, part of this lesson is taken from the sine curve. Okay, that, the, that there are two angles between 0 and 180 which always share the same sine ratio. Okay, one of them is um, the one that the calculator gives you when you press that, whoops, just please disappear. Okay, here like this. Okay, so one of them is the, is the angle that the calculator will give you when you press inverse sine of the ratio. And there's another angle which shares the same ratio between 0 and 180, okay, which is 180 minus that angle. Okay, because the reason being the sine curve, this is 0, this is 90, this is 180. The sine curve is symmetrical about 90 degrees. Yeah, 90 degrees is symmetrical. So, for example, if we found the angle 37 point whatever, that's the angle 37 point whatever. There's another angle here, which is, if this, this is symmetrical, then this distance is the same as that distance. So 180 minus that distance will give you this angle here. So 180 minus 37 point whatever will give you the angle here. That's why we subtract it from 180. Okay, so if you just remember that when you got to find two possible values, when you're dealing with the sine ratio, 
Okay, which is the only one you'll have to deal with right, right now on your level. Okay, when the sign, when you get the sign ratio, and they say there's two possible values for an angle, or sometimes it says the angle is obtuse, and your calculator gives you an acute angle, then to find the obtuse one, you do 180 minus the value that's in your calculator, and that's how you get the other angle. Okay? I hope that's clear for you. Thank you for listening.